What's up everyone? In this video, I'm going to be looking at the World of Warcraft Game Data APIs. I'm going to be doing an overview of the developer portal on Battle.net. The developer portal allows us to get a list of all of the available Game Data APIs available to us. It tells us exactly the parameters that we need to pass, and it gives us a Try It button where we can click a button and we can get back a real response so we can see the format and the structure of the response just as it would appear to us as if we were coding it. Once we have our developer portal all set up, we can simply log in, browse the game data APIs, and if we're interested in seeing a current list of pets, we just expand the pet API section, and this will give us back an index of battle pets. These are the parameters, and all we have to do is we have to click the try it button. Scroll down a little bit, it tells us the exact request URL that was hit, gives us response status, response headers, and here's what we got back. In the body, we see we have an array of pets. We have a key, a name, and an ID. Now, if we wanted to dive deeper, say we wanted to get more info on the Bombay cat, ID of 40. We're gonna minimize the pet index section and right below it is the pet endpoint. This endpoint is where you have to specify a specific pet ID. I'm gonna say 40, leave the rest, and hit try it. Scroll down to the response body. Now we have all the available information to us through the pets API. Here we're specifying the ID of 40, which is the Bombay cat. Gives us a pet type, a description, some other flags here, the abilities of the pet, source, an icon for the pet, creature, and another flag right here. That is what we can get back for each of the pets. Once your developer account is set up, you will be able to do the same. Come in here, browse this list, and hit try it on any endpoint you please. Let's start back at the beginning. I'll show you guys how to set up your developer accounts. So the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to head over to develop.battle.net. Come up here under the My Account section and click Login. We are in. Head over to the API Access. We need to get access before we can access the documentation. Click on API Access, scroll down, and we are in the Manage Your Client section. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click the Create Client right here. You're going to want to give your client a name. I just called mine Justin Test. A redirect URL I just put in my website here. I also put my website in here. And I just gave a little description on how I'm going to use this. This is going to be a test, blah, blah, blah. Um, right now, the redirect and service URL don't really matter for the Game Data API, but they are required in order to set up a client. Once you fill those in, hit the Save button and you will have yourself a client. In your clients list, go ahead and click on your client. This will bring up more details on your client. Up here, you have your client ID. You have a button to show your secret because we will need to be getting that in just a minute. And then you can see the rate limits that they place on our client. Here we got 36,000 requests per hour, 100 requests per second. And down here, you can see the settings and update them if you need. I'm gonna keep my manager's client page open and I'm gonna open a new tab for the documentation. Up here, right click and open a new tab. You can see all the things that we have access to, which it's actually quite extensive. If we scroll down here in the documentation, we can see Battle.net, Diablo, StarCraft, Hearthstone, World of Warcraft, and World of Warcraft Classic. This is all the things that we can access with the client that we just set up. In this case, we're gonna be focusing on the World of Warcraft Game Data APIs, which is this World of Warcraft section right here. This is gonna take us to the World of Warcraft section for documentation. We scroll down a little bit, we see the guides section. This tells us a little bit about this API. We can look at the namespaces, there's known issues, localization, media documents, and character renders. We're gonna look at the namespaces first because we need to look at these guides in order to understand the API endpoints once we get there. The namespaces under the World of Warcraft Game Data APIs consist of three different types. There's a static, a dynamic, and a profile. The static ones pretty much are things like your pets, you know, your items, stuff that doesn't change. That's always gonna be the same. The dynamic namespace is in reference to something like the auction house, right? That thing's, that's constantly changing, so it's dynamic. The data you get back from those endpoints is gonna be different. And then there's the profile namespace, which um, is gonna get back specific info on that player's character at the time you're grabbing it. That's the kind of the overview right there that's described. Um, available namespaces, we see we got the three here. 
Along with each namespace, you also specify a region. The regions right here, defined right here, have each have an identifier. So if you're getting back a list of pets for the US, it's static-US, static-EU, KR, any region that you want. Same with the dynamic and the profile. The localization is basically what language do you want it in. And whenever you hit any API, you have to specify um, a value for the localization that you want. You want the response back in English, Spanish, Portuguese, German, and so on. These are the current supported locals. Here is an example of the default behavior. If you don't pass any localization along, you will get all the localizations. This is good because then you don't have to hit the endpoint 12 times, one for each of these. You can hit the endpoint once, you don't specify the localization, you get all the languages back, and that way you can save all 12 in one call versus 12 calls for each localization. In this example here, they specified the Korean locale. When you specify the locale, all you get back is that language. The next thing we're going to look at is the media. When we're talking about media documents, we're basically just talking about the images. And we're going to get the image for whatever media document we're requesting. For example, an item or a spell, we're going to get back a link to the JPEG of that item or that spell. The image is the exact image that we're going to be seeing if we actually logged into the game and checked out the image for that item or that spell. In the sample here, we're looking at an item. Item ID 19019. Thunder Fury Blast Blade of the Windseeker. That's the item. And with the item, we see this media right here. The media is going to give us an ID. With this media ID, we can pass that along to the media endpoint for the item and actually get back the JPEG image. In a sample media document down here, this is a sample media call for this item, and we called it with the ID 19019. When we hit the media endpoint right here, wow, slash media, slash item, slash ID. What do we get back? We get back the assets for that ID. Here in the value is the actual image for the item. If I open up a new page, and I paste that in here, you see we have the actual image for the item. So whenever you hear media, just think image. We looked at the namespaces guide, static dynamic profile, and the region. We looked at the localization, which basically says what languages do you want to get the data back in. And then we looked at the media documents, which is how you get the images for the things that you're looking up. And those are the three guides that we need to look at in order to proceed to the game data APIs. I'm going to scroll down to the API reference section, and I'm going to click on the game data APIs. Click view API reference. This will show us a list of all available game data APIs. The first thing we see is our host names. For all of the regions except China, we start off our host name like this. For US, we would do us.api.blizzard.com. If we wanted to do EU, we would do eu.api.blizzard.com. Same for Korea, they got KR, so we do kr.api.blizzard.com. The only difference is China. We have to do gateway.blizzard.com slash cn. And that is our host name for the endpoint that we're hitting. Next, it tells us how to use the namespaces. As we scroll down and look at each of the endpoints, each endpoint does specify which namespace to use, so it's pretty self-explanatory there. Here is the list of all the APIs. We can get achievements, we can auction house information, hazard essence stuff, connected realms, creatures, guild crest, items, journals, mounts, mythic keystone affix, mythic keystone dungeon, mythic keystone leaderboard, the mythic raid leaderboard, pets, playable classes, playable races, playable specialization, power type, PvP season, PvP tier, quest, realm, region, reputation, spell, talent, title, wow, and WoW token API. So we have access to quite a lot of things here. We'll dive into one of these sections. Once you understand one section, the rest are pretty much the same. Let's dive into the playable specialization API. I'm picking this one to look at because it has the three things that most of these different APIs will have. Some won't have all three, but this one does. Once you learn one, they're all pretty much the same. You have an index of the thing you're looking at. You can go deeper and specify the ID of one of the items. 
to get more info on that single item. And then you have the media, which gives you back the image for the thing you're looking at. Some of these things, for example, power types, doesn't have a media. It just has an index and then a power type. So you can just get more info on the power type. There's no media for it, no image for it. The first thing is the index endpoint. Notice how they all have, again, these. once you learn one, they're pretty much all the same. You can see that there's a playable race index, here a playable specialization index, power type index, season index. The index gives you back a list of IDs and the name for that ID. In this case, we're looking at the specializations. It's going to return us an, an index of playable specializations. Here is the region. We specify our region, the namespace. This one is static. It requ it's required to be static. And the locale. Click the Try It button. And you are prompted to put in your client ID and your client secret. In the tab that we have open over here, we're going to copy our credentials, our client ID. And we're going to show our secret. Copy the secret and click Make Request, and then spit out the response for the Playable Specialization Index. Looks like it worked. If we we can see the request URL here, we see the request URL, response, headers, and the body. And in this array right here, character specializations, we have an array, we have a name, and an ID. Now, since we specified the locale, like I was saying earlier, it's only going to give us back the US version of each ID. If I want to get back all of the languages, I do not have to pa pass along a locale because this, it is not required. I'm going to remove the value and click try it. Now if I scroll down, I should see all of the languages possible for each specialization. The name has turned into an array keyed by each value for the different languages. So this gives us back an index. The index, like I said, is an ID along with the name for the ID. But what if we want more info on, say, the fire specialization? Well, then we copy the ID 63 and we expand the player specialization spec ID. Here we pass in the ID of the specialization that we want info back on. In this case, fire was 63 and we click try it. Now we get a lot more information on the specialization fire than we did in just the index because the index only provides us the IDs and the name. Here we get back the ID. We can see playable class, name, which is a, there's a gender description. Here's the media ID. That's what we'll be using to get the image for this specialization. There's a role associated with it and then there's talent tiers for the specialization. Keep scrolling down and see if there's anything else associated here. Looks like we have PvP talents as well. A lot more info. So you can see the endpoint where you specify only a single ID for what you're looking for. You can get back a ton more info than you would by just hitting the index endpoint. Because you're getting back all the info for just one thing. Now remember that you can always get back, for example, things that are language specific, if I take away the en underscore us, we should see a lot more arrays in here with all of the language keys, the locale keys. So if I remove the value from here and I do try it again, now we should see exactly like I thought we got a name here, but in this case we have all the languages. Same for the description, the description, everything comes back localized for what you specify, unless you don't specify anything, then it we get everything back. So let's say, just say we wanted to do French. Now by updating the locale to French, we should get back all of our data in French. Hit try it, scroll down, and we're back to, we don't have any more arrays. We just get one string back, but it's all in French. And that is the playable specialization endpoint for a single spec. Now, what we want to do is look at the media endpoint. So, for this spec, 63, we're going to minimize our playable specialization endpoint, and we're going to expand our playable specialization media endpoint. The parameters here, uh, we always have a region. There's always a namespace. There's always a locale. In this case, you want to look up 63, and we want to click Try It. The response for this gives us back the assets for the specialization. 
give it an icon, and the value for the icon is a link to the image. Let's check that out in another browser tab. And we see that is the icon for fire. So that's an overview of the index, which is a list of everything in the API, in that API section, in this case, all the specializations. There is a single specialization section, and then there is a media specialization section. And that is the standard across all these APIs. If I come down here and I look at the, let's just pick another one, reputations API, we have a factions index. This is going to give me an index of all the factions, which is going to be an ID and a name. Right? I'm going to click try it. I'm going to see an array of factions, a name and an ID. I can specify if I want to look more into the Iron Forge faction. I can come back up here, minimize this, and expand the faction endpoint and specify 47. Click try it. And now I have more info on the Iron Forge. We got a description, tiers, and the faction. In this case, we don't have a media endpoint for the faction because that one obviously doesn't have any images. And same, tier index, tiers. Spells, spell. Once you learn one, you know them all. And that is going to wrap up our overview of the World of Warcraft Game Data API. It's always good, if possible, if they provide a developer portal like this, to log in and learn as much as you can before you start coding. You need to learn about the API, you need to see the endpoints, you need to know the parameters. That way you can come up with a plan and you can know what to expect when you start coding against that API. In the next video, I'm going to be coding against these APIs. We've seen the documentation, we know what to expect, we're ready to code. That's going to wrap up this video. Hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you want to see coded up next. I'll catch you later.